So now we're searching for the magic frequency. And we start with 100 hertz, and we look through the microscope to see if anything's happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. We try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. Because we believed there just had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. And we think we may have found it. I have here two identical tuning forks, both tuned to the note A, the note an orchestra tunes to. These forks are both made to vibrate 440 times per second. We say their frequency is 440 hertz. If I tap this fork, putting little pulses of energy into it, the second fork will also vibrate in sympathy. And if I silence this fork, we just may, may hear the other singing its tone. We say that I'm inducing a sympathetic resonant vibration in the second fork. It only works because both forks are tuned to the exact same frequency. Now, many of us have seen this very charming young man on the internet who shatters crystal glasses with his powerful voice. But if you watch him carefully, you'll see that first he taps the glass with his finger and listens. The glass sings its natural resonant pitch. Then he takes a deep breath and sings a loud, long note. He induces a resonant vibration in the crystal glass. The vibration grows larger and larger and larger until the glass is shattered. On the other end of the scale, we have a giant bridge made out of concrete and steel, a suspension bridge, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Cars and trucks and buses are going over it every day. And unfortunately, where they built this bridge, there was a steady wind blowing across it. And one day this wind induces a small vibration in the bridge, hardly noticeable. But the frequency of the vibration matches the resonant frequency of some part of the bridge. And the vibration gets larger and larger and larger until the bridge collapses into the river below. A destructive resonant frequency. So on one end of the scale, we have a giant concrete and steel bridge destroyed by resonance. And on the other, we have a small crystal glass shattered. So maybe we could shatter something even smaller, something really small, something you would need a microscope to see. Maybe we could shatter a living microorganism. So maybe we could change a biological living liquid crystal with a special electronic signal. But in order to do that, we would need some kind of device. So we search the US patent database and we find this invention by a physician, Dr. James Bear of Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's called a resonant frequency therapy device and its purpose is to induce a resonant vibration in a living organism or cell. If I put in, say, 100 hertz, out will come 100 pulses per second. If I put in 200 hertz, we'll get 200 pulses. So now we're searching for the magic frequency. And we start with 100 hertz, and we look through the microscope to see if anything's happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. So we try 101 hertz. We look through the scope for five minutes, and nothing happens. So we try 102, 103, and so on. Over the course of 15 months, we try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. The answer is you have to have two input frequencies, one low, one high, and the higher frequency must be 11 times the lower. It's what we musicians would call the 11th harmonic. When we add the 11th harmonic, we begin to shatter microorganisms 
like a crystal glass. These are the first videos taken. We showed these videos to our friends in the biology department. They said they hadn't seen anything quite like it. it seems to be a new phenomenon. These organisms are being shattered by our electronic signals. We now know that cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and also dies. Leukemia cell number three then tries to make another cancer cell. The new cell is shattered and the original cell dies. This one is called the Vela Pulsar, and it's magnificent. It's a highly magnetized neutron star. And as it is oscillating, you can see what's happening. It's shooting a radio frequency out of itself. When they aimed the radio telescopes at the Vela Pulsar, this is what they heard. And this is what this guy does 24-7, day and night, 365 days a year. The Vela Pulsar sounds like right now, this is it. Listen to this. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, that blew me away. I'm thinking, wow, this is incredible.
singing. The stars are singing to him. I recently stumbled on 47 Tuck. It's a, a beautiful uh, cluster of stars. We'll show you the picture of it here. There are 12 of these super giant blue stars in there. But the things that are of interest to us tonight are these millisecond pulsars. And right now tonight, while we're sitting in this room, the 16 recorded millisecond pulsars in 47 Tuck are making this sound right now. Beautiful. Who knew? You know, God has his own string section. <laughs> He's isn't that beautiful. And we just looked at one 11 times a second pulsar and 16 millisecond pulsars, and you start seeing Psalm 48 come to life. The first time I saw sonal luminescence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid. And you'd look into the center, and in the center see a, uh, a glowing blue-purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. looked like a star in the heavens. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second giving the appearance of a star by a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius and photographed them under a microscope. Beautiful structured ice crystals appeared and they even appeared to be all different depending from which water they were taken. But the most revolutionary discovery was done as water was exposed to music. Water exposed to music showed beautiful crystals.
start seeing Psalm 48 come to life. But look down at verse 7. It says, Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all deeps. The, the whale songs could sound like this right here. Take a listen. We don't know the expanse of the worship that is continually surrounding the throne of God. What I'm going to do is I'm going to levitate some water. And we'll begin with simply the concentric patterns in the water as the frequency begins. Every once in a while, we'll reach a key threshold resonance, such as that moment right there. And in that key threshold resonance, the entire pattern morphed into a more complex expression of itself, simply because the frequency changed. Now watch what happens. The frequency is still increasing. And watch what happens. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There's a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. 